It's 12 o'clock, and now, from TV8, where news is number one, Polly Cooney, John McLaughlin, and Mary Brubaker. This is TV8 News, live at noon. Good afternoon, everyone. Thanks for joining us. The Iowa legislature this morning opened what could be its final day of the 1989 session, and many lawmakers are optimistic about a smooth finish to what has been a difficult year. TV8 State House reporter Chris Lidstedt has been at Capitol Hill this morning. He joins us now live. What's left to be done there, Chris? Well, Molly, lawmakers worked out major differences last night with an agreement on how to distribute road funds between state highways, city streets, and county roads. They jumped a high hurdle. Then the House approved the Democratic prison plan, which would add space for nearly 500 inmates. That cleared another legislative hurdle. The tough fights now will come over spending bills, which make up next year's state budget. Many of those are being read in conference committees like this one. Money issues are always difficult at the State House, but most of the remaining disputes aren't directly related to spending. Instead, they involve issues which fail to pass on their own merits as individual bills. Now, those issues have been tacked onto spending measures to get them passed anyway. Those include a proposal to require unisex insurance rates in Iowa and a plan to build an artificial lake at Brushy Creek Valley near Fort Dodge. Lawmakers are unwilling to take any action to resolve one long-standing conflict, what to do with home and church schools in Iowa. If nothing is done, that we will see some areas where there will be some prosecuted. What can be done, we could extend the moratorium, and that's what I would hope that we can do in these last hours of the session. Attempts yesterday to extend that moratorium on prosecution of homeschoolers failed. That ban expires June 30th, and home and church schoolers are worried. Any guess on when they will go home? Well, they're still thinking probably Saturday or Sunday, but there was some hope this morning. Senate leaders thought maybe if they worked really hard, they could get out late, late, late tonight. And you'll be there. I'll be there. All right, thanks, Late, Chris. late, late. <laughs> okay, a Des Moines woman and her two small children escaped injury this morning when fire broke out in their north side home. Firefighters were called to the house at 1131 11th Street about 9.30 this morning. Connie Brown pulled her four-year-old son and six-year-old son from the living rooms of the house where the fire started. Investigators say the fire apparently started when the four-year-old was playing with matches. The house was totaled. The fire remains under investigation by the Des Moines Fire Department. A 52-year-old Ottumwa woman was killed this morning when the car she was driving was hit by a truck at an Ottumwa intersection. Officials say the victim has been identified as Mary Jean Jellings. They say she drove her car into the path of the truck, driven by Richard Young of Houston. He was not injured. An 18-month-old Story City boy was killed yesterday when a car accidentally backed over him while he and other children were playing in a church parking lot. Officials say Caleb James Grewell was hit by a car driven by Lisa Brown of Radcliffe. The toddler died later at a Story City Hospital and investigation is continuing. And a Des Moines man was among the five U.S. Marines killed Wednesday during a nighttime helicopter training mission in France. Officials say 21-year-old Matthew Roussel of Des Moines was a mechanic on the chopper. The UH-1 Huey crashed and exploded in a mountain area near Rougan, northwest of Nice. There is no word on what caused the crash. The attorney for truck driver Sam Lacey today charged the Polk County Attorney's Office with political favoritism, cronyism, and discrimination. At a news conference, Alfredo Parrish says his client, Sam Lacey, wanted to plead guilty yesterday to a lesser charge of two counts of willful injury. Parrish says the Polk County Attorney's Office wanted the judge to guarantee Lacey would have to serve two 10-year sentences consecutively. Does Judge Anthony Cortelli would not guarantee that, Polk County officials would not agree to the plea bargain. 49-year-old Sam Lacey is charged with two counts of attempted murder. He's the Blue Springs, Missouri man accused of shooting two supervisors at the Wilson's Food Company last May. Parrish says because his client is black and from out of state, the county attorney's office is discriminating against him. If they want a plea bargain, um, they should do it on the same basis that they have plea bargained in all of the other cases. They are not doing that. They are plea bargaining on the basis, it seems to me, of some policies that are not written, on some policies that smack of friendship, and on policies that smack of political cronyism. Polk County Attorney Jim Smith called a news conference of his own this morning. We'll have more on that tonight at 6. In other news today, criminal charges have been dropped against an Urbandale man, Les Pearl. Pearl used to run a tennis shop at Polk Boulevard and University in Des Moines. In January, he was charged with being in possession of stolen camera equipment and illegal drugs. The Polk County attorney now has dropped the drug charges due to insufficient evidence. The other charge was dropped because of a lack of proof that Pearl knew the goods had been stolen. 
In police say they had a relatively calm night as visa celebrations got underway at Iowa State University. Ames Police Chief Dennis Ballantyne says eight people were arrested for drunkenness or alcohol possession. Twelve people also ticketed for other alcohol violations. Ballantyne says the number of incidents were no heavier than the average weekend night. Ames Police, although, had extra officers on duty last night and added patrols will also be used throughout the weekend to help avoid disturbances like those that disrupted last year. The Des Moines Post Office will begin delivering mail again tomorrow to two apartment buildings where gunshots were fired last week. Yesterday, the location at 11-13-21st was the site of a drug raid. Des Moines police arrested two people and found a small amount of crack cocaine valued at about $150. Police say the area has been plagued with dealers selling drugs in the streets in recent months, and residents are moving out because of the activity. The mail carrier to that area refused to deliver mail after gunshots were heard. Now the U.S. Post Office says they will resume mail delivery on a day-to-day -day basis. It's the first time mail has been interrupted in Des Moines for that reason. So still to come on the new news, an update on the flight of Atlantis. And Steve Oswald continues his trip back to 1969. Stay with us. The Magellan probe is motoring its way towards Venus at 25,000 miles an hour. The four-man, one-woman crew of the space shuttle Atlantis successfully deployed the space probe, signaling the, uh, signaling the end of a 10-year lull in planetary exploration. James Satori has the story. Just six hours after launch, the shuttle Atlantis opened its cargo bay and sent the unmanned Magellan probe on its 806 million mile journey to Venus. After a 10-year hiatus, the United States is back into planetary research. Magellan is deployed. Roger that, Atlantis. The spacecraft is, is performing just beautifully. Um, all systems are, are operational and, and nominal. Once in place, Magellan will use radar to map the surface of Venus, a planet whose secrets may reveal clues to Earth's past and future. While we realize that uh, it's too early to tell about the major portion of Magellan's mission, we're very pleased that it's gone so well so far. Yesterday's launch was a cliffhanger. Low clouds prompted a delay, and the mission came within five minutes of being postponed a second time in as many weeks. You guys and the thousands of people standing behind you have just done a wonderful job, and I'm really proud of you. NASA says the mission is going well, nearly flawless. Atlantis and its four-man, one-woman crew are due back on Earth Monday afternoon. The Magellan probe will continue streaking toward Venus on a trip which will last 15 and a half months and yield scientific knowledge for years. James Vittori, CBS News, Houston. Oliver North today is vowing his conviction on three felonies in the Iran-Contra affair eventually will be overturned. North says as a Marine, he was taught to fight hard for as long as it takes. Attorneys for the former White House aide are working on an appeal. North is scheduled to be sentenced in June. He faces up to 10 years in prison and a $750,000 fine on the three guilty verdicts. Vice President Dan Quayle is in Alaska for a look at the beaches soiled by the nation's worst oil spill. Quayle's visit has included a walk down Smith Island Beach, among the hardest hit by the 10 million gallon spill. Quayle says he thinks Exxon is going to have to do more than it's planning to to get this mess cleaned up. Iran's parliament speaker is urging Palestinians to start a wave of violence in retaliation for Israeli attacks in the occupied region. Iran's official news agency quotes Hashimi Rafsanjani as saying that Palestinians should retaliate by killing Westerners, including Americans, blowing up factories and hijacking planes. This week, TV Steve Oswald has been taking a look back at the year 1969, the year when man first walked on the moon. Thousands traveled to Woodstock, the Charles Manson murders took place, and it was the year Richard Nixon became president. There was plenty happening in central Iowa as well, and as Steve reports in the second part of his series today. July 20th, 1969. The first man walked on the moon at 9.56 p.m. Iowa time. That's one small step for man. Just a month earlier, man had walked into Des Moines' first head shop, Dottie Dumpling's Dowry. These home movies of the time showed a clever sign with real tubas on each side that lured flower children into the store. What a place. I mean, you walked in there and it was kind of the culture of the era was right there. Everything you'd ever possibly want and some things you shouldn't have. You see, Dottie's was the first place in Des Moines where you could buy marijuana pipes. 
flavored cigarette papers and the incense to cover up the smell. It would be very similar to opening a massage parlor in a good uh, evangelical small community. Donnie's was also the hippies hangout for wild clothes of the 1960s. Steve Matthews still has the shirt that he purchased there. Well, this is the cool stuff. This was cool. Can you believe that that was ever cool? <laughs> but in just five years, Dottie's was closed. I uh, didn't like the clientele I was getting as time went on were not flower children. They were dangerous people that carried weapons. Today, Dottie's is a laundromat. 1969 also saw Vice President Spiro Agnew making one of his most notorious speeches. He highly criticized television networks for biased reporting, and it happened in Des Moines. The views of a majority of this fraternity do not, and I repeat, not represent the views of America. After the speech was given, even though network television were, people were terribly upset, uh, I think the people cheered him. And tonight at 10, Steve wraps up his series with a look at how cars have changed in the past 20 years. Switching gears now to weather, we've mm -hmm. had quite a change in the weather, some Big severe. so far. Yes. And it's going to get worse. Oh, it's going no. to get very cold tonight, so bundle up yourself and all those little plants and things like that outside. <laughs> oh. We'll tell you about it right after this. For the latest official forecast, 24 hours a day, call TV8 Weather, 262-7173. Well, if you go up very high today, it's cold enough that it can snow. In fact, the Sioux City reported some snow a little earlier today, no accumulation, but uh, snow in May, don't like it at all. Right now, we're looking at uh, Jester Park, and the kids out there are waving. They're bundling up. They've got their tiger blankets, probably some Elvis blankets back there somewhere. Right now, let's look at the current conditions. Partly sunny, 50 degrees currently. North winds, 21, gusting up to around 28 miles an hour. We don't figure a wind chill factor when it's this warm up, but uh, with those winds, it is cool. 36% relative humidity, keep waving, 29.94 and steady. National Weather Service radar reveals a few showers still taking place around the Carroll area, back towards Jefferson and back towards Audubon. Uh, movement has not been determined on these yet, but will probably be off towards the southeast at around 30 miles an hour. And it is cold enough that some of this could be producing some sleet and snow. All right, around Iowa right now, we're looking at very cool conditions. 44 currently in Spencer. 36 in the Sioux City area, 46 back towards Fort Dodge, warmest air in the southeast part of the state where we're still seeing some readings in the upper 40s to low 50. Low temperatures this morning, 36 in Sioux City, 41 in the Fort Dodge area, 38 in Ames, overnight in Des Moines, 42, and for tonight we can take about 15 degrees off that because it is really going to get cool. We have a very cold Arctic air mass working its way across the upper Midwest, pushing out a cold front that came through here yesterday, sparking a few thunder showers. And very severe weather occurring again across much of the south and southeast. As many as six people are dead from tornadoes spawned by this storm area that you see in here. Dozens injured and in some places up to a foot of rain. So flash flooding is claiming some lives as well. Temperatures right now you can see to the north very cool. 37 in Bismarck, 20 International Falls. Northern Minnesota tonight will dip into the teens and they could likely get up to around an inch of snow, especially across northeast Minnesota to the south. The warmer air is being confined on the south side of the jet stream. For today, kind of a Mixture of rain, sleet, and snow possible across much of northern Iowa. Temperatures in the upper 40s to low 50s in the south, mid to upper 50s, with a 30% chance of rain. Strong northwest winds. Tonight, a freeze advisory in effect for the entire state as temperatures dip into the 20s north to around 30 in the south with light north winds and clear skies. And then for tomorrow, not warming up at all. Temperatures as high as 54 in the southwest, only upper 40s in the northeast. More like March than May. Now the forecast for Des Moines and central Iowa, windy and cold with a 30% chance of showers, high 54 to 56. Tonight a freeze advisory, record low temperatures possible, 25 to 30 degrees with north wind at 10. Tomorrow partly sunny and cool, high 52 to 55. And the extended forecast, cold won't last long, it's supposed to warm up about Sunday into Monday with temperatures in the 60s and 70s. Right now we're looking at a whopping 50 degrees, partly sunny skies. Too cold to go fishing this weekend, so stay home and watch our fishing show Saturday at 1. At 1 o'clock. Okay. All right. Thanks a lot, John. Good. Sounds like a good idea. Turning to now to markets, it's higher today in active trading. The volume of the first three hours, 86 million shares. The Dow is up 19 points at 2404, an average share of common stock up 18 cents. Midwest cattle prices untested. Butchers today are steady to 50 higher. Sows today are steady. 
And in Chicago, May corn is higher at 277, May beans higher at 754, May wheat is higher at 437. Mary's trying to stay warm on a Jessica <laughs> Park. We'll turn around and find out how she's doing. I'm doing fine because I thought to bring my mittens. No, my gloves, actually. I feel like Mother Goose with more children than I know what to do with, but we'll tell you why we're all at Jessica Park if you'll stay tuned right after this. We're at Jester Park here with about 560 kids from the Des Moines Christian School. This is their annual walkathon. They've done this for three years. They didn't expect this kind of weather, but it's better than rain, Luann Gardner. That's right. I heard this morning somebody <laughs> said, uh, we prayed for no rain, but we forgot to pray for heat. But they're having a ball out here. Well, we're having a good time just seeing them having a good time, and they're doing it all. Come on over here, Sam Warren, who's uh, superintendent of Des Moines Christian Schools. They're doing it for a good cause, right? They sure are. They're raising money for quality education. And this is your major fundraiser for the year? Yes, it is. And uh, Luann, you said 560? 560 students out here, plus about 45 to 50 faculty members and lots of parents volunteering and helping. How do you keep uh, them all corralled? They're so good and so quiet. Well, they've been walking for a long time. I think they're probably tired and ready for a rest about now. They also want to see themselves on TV, and so mm -hmm. do all their families, so we're going to have to move out of the way a little bit. But let me ask Bill Ross, uh, why, why you do this every year? Well, it helps the school to benefit the budget to raise the funds for the teachers and program. And you're elementary school principal, Bill? Yes, so I you've am. You've got all the little ones. I have all the little ones. Uh, Dan, uh... Dan Henderson. Henderson. Dan, uh, all ages out here today? All ages. We've got K through 12 out here today, so all the ages. And you're going to feed them, too? They're going to feed themselves. <laughs> the, the, did they have to pack a lunch? Well, the uh, some of the kids did. I think the upperclassmen are cooking uh, steaks or something like yeah. that. Uh, <laughs> but and, uh, what's the course? How many miles? Uh, I think it's a three, two-mile course, and they walk back and forth on two miles. Some of them got quite a few miles so far, I think. I have a feeling somebody behind me is thinking, why don't the grown-ups get out of the way so we can see ourselves on TV? Why don't all grown-ups move off to the left here? And we'll keep talking, however, while everyone can get a shot uh, on TV. This is your chance, folks. Everybody's going to be famous for 15 minutes, as Andy Warhol said. And this is your chance to wave. And I'm sure somebody will be disappointed, but we're doing the best we can, Luann. That's right. It's been really a profitable day for us today. Um, I tallied up some of our donations before we came out here today. And in flat donations, we'd raised over about $15,000 in flat donations so far. And uh, per mile pledges, we had close to $700. And I know some of these kids have already walked 8, 9, 10 miles. You add up that $700, that's another, you know, $7,000. So our goal is $25,000. And we're encouraging anyone out there that maybe knows a student at the school to call and make a donation. Thanks, Luann. Sam, I want to ask you, since you're the superintendent, what the Des Moines Christian School is all about? What kind of education are you giving these youngsters? Des Moines Christian School is in its 42nd year, so we have a long tradition behind us, tradition of quality education taught from a background of traditional Christian values. And do you uh, have uh, the regular curriculum? I mean, you have everything that uh, somebody would get in a parochial school or in a public school? We sure do. We have the reading and the math and the elementary going right on up through an approved accredited high school. We offer all the courses required by the state of Iowa for approval. And uh, I know you have graduation, just like any other school has graduation. Do you keep track of your graduates, and how do they do? Well, our high school is the youngest aspect of our program. This will be our third graduating class, so we do have a young alumni association. You don't have to worry about prayer in the school. It's probably part of your curriculum every day, right, Sam? Right, front and center. <laughs> okay. Are there uh, any of the youngsters that uh, would like to make a comment here? Let's, uh, let's, let's get over here to the senior girls. Uh, Jeff, if you can find us over here in the crowd, let me ask you uh, what your name is. Anissa Myers. And yours? Christy Briggs. Vicki Vanderhart. Now, I'd like to know a little bit about what you think about going to Des Moines Christian Ooh. School. Oh, I love it a lot of fun. You meet a lot of people and you get a great education too. I've been here since preschool and it's been the caring teachers and my great friends that have kept me going. Yeah, I've, I really like it. I got transferred and um, I just, the students here, I've met a lot of good friends and teachers. There's a special element obviously in uh, that Des Moines Christian School, which is located at 48th and Franklin. You have room at the First Federated Church, is we that right? facilities from First Federated. Okay. Let me talk to some, hey, how far did you walk today? Three miles. How'd it feel? Fine. How about the rest of you? Look Five at all the. Five miles. I guess. I, I'm sorry, 
right, folks, you're going to have to give us the rest of the news because we want to have a personal interview with all 560 children from the Des Moines Christian School. No, 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 just, just kidding. But I do want to, as we wind up today and say, please support uh, your friends and neighbors who go here, uh, I do want to ask everybody if they're having a good time. Yeah! I guess that says it all from Jester Park. <laughs> Thanks, Mary. <laughs> it does, doesn't it? It reminds you of it. They, look, they didn't look too cold out there. Okay, we'll have fitness tips for you all trying to get in shape for spring and summer when it arrives here. We'll have that coming up next. percent of all women have cellulite in their lower body. It's a stubborn type of fat that is almost impossible to get rid of without concentrated regular exercise. Today, as our fitness series continues, our workout expert Christy Bozen has some tips on ways to strengthen and tone your hips and legs and lose that fat. Here's Christy. You're going to start to modify with the step back. Good. Less stressful on your knees. Then we're going to add intensity by lowering it and extending the leg back further. Good. Now, for those of you that don't have a lot of knee problems, we're going to increase the intensity. We're going to step forward. Now, it's very important when you do this to keep the knee directly over the ankle. Good. Press all the pressure in through the heel, not through the toe. Now, we're also going to add a little more intensity. We're going to add movement, dynamic movement. Kathy's going to propel forward. Good. Alternating legs like long steps. Good. It's very important to keep your back straight. Good. Why don't you turn? And keep a tall torso, looking slightly up and ahead. And again, watching your knee. It stays directly over the ankle, and you propel through the heel of the foot. And Christy will be back next Friday noon with more fitness tips. I'm a little worried about Mary out there with all those kids. We better uh, check on her again and find out what's coming up next week. Don't worry about me. Worry about Sam Warren. What are you going to do at 1 o'clock? I'm going in the dunk tank. I'm the big attraction. <laughs> I'm glad I'm not going to be here. On Monday, we're going to talk about Iowa tourism and all the Iowa treasures to see this summer. So uh, Dave Reynolds will talk about that. So you're not going to get wet today, huh, Mary? I don't think so. <laughs> okay. Not a job I want to do. By, by, by Monday, our weather ought to be improving, but the next couple of days, kind of chilly. Especially today, we'll be looking at high temperatures, 54 to 56 degrees. Then tonight, a freeze advisory, 25 to 30 for the low. Right now, we're partly sunny and 50 degrees. And coming up tonight on the TV8 News Live at 6, we'll hear from folks in Tama, a winner of a Project Main Street Award. We'll hear about a long march through central Iowa by local Army reservists and folks from three other states. And we'll have a live report from Ames, where Visha celebrations are underway, and the Iowa State Cyclones will play their spring football game. It does seem more like fall today, doesn't yeah, it? It does, indeed. Thanks for joining us today at noon. Join us again Monday, right here. Have a good weekend.